lost. Most of us implicitly Forest teaches man more about the man than man ever could. After visiting settlements where the mighty cat predators roam freely in the night and cross roads and even national highways, I realize now why life always finds a way. All of us face various ordeals in our daily life, but in the wild, life is dramatic beyond human comprehension. Every single day is a struggle for survival. Just like ancient humans, the cats fight for territories and mates. The trees fight for sunlight, the insects for food. But there's one fight that they're all involved in together. Every single day, they fight for life. It is all about the present for all non-human creatures. All of them, they live exactly when they are. Now one could argue that they do this to secure a future, but think about it this way. Looking forward in life is important, it, it helped us get where we are. But unlike us, they don't live in the future. You might think these predators are the kings of their habitats, but it isn't necessarily so. There are no kings, there are just survivors. Every time a predator walks the path, the entire forest enters an alarming state. Everyone works together to survive. The birds start whistling as loud as they can. The monkeys start bantering, the squirrels start rustling. All of this to alarm the prey. Any prey who the predator might have their eye on. This helpful cooperation is absolutely mind-blowing because everyone knows that someday this could be them. The tiger has a hunting success rate of just about 40%. This is why even the so-called king starves for almost 10 days before a successful kill. But have you ever seen an animal stressing about what's going to happen tomorrow? What if the plants started worrying about not getting rain? Or if the deer started worrying about being eaten. Or the tiger worrying about not finding a mate. These are life-threatening worries, but it all starts somewhere. It's like a virus. Eventually, you'll see plants worrying about not having an attractive insect climbing its leaves. Or the deer not liking the color of dry grass. All completely ridiculous, yet all very human. In this habitat, just one in three cubs survives to be older than three years of age. A very problematic statistic considering all the diseases and threat from leopards eating their cubs. There's tigresses who mate with alphas of different territories to ensure the survival of her cubs. In nature, I've seen a mother cry over the death of her cub. I've seen the ferocious anger of a predator before making a kill. I've also seen the pride of one right after. Nature is capable of all the expressions that you and I have the luxury of expending. It isn't less abled. Even after something tragic happens, the creatures mourn, but very quickly enter an almost transient state. A state I find closest to my definition of the spiritual realm where the head is showering with life as if light was scattering through a prism, where purpose, time and space all fail to exist, where energy and emotion become synonymous, where the bliss of the life force masks all tragedies and truly gets you to the same density as the singular one of this reality. But notice, 
that all of these expressions pertain to events that are happening right now. I've never seen a creature just idly sitting with an expression showing emotion because it's thinking about something that's yet to happen. Or even worse, because it's hung up over a past event. Time has not three, but two parts to it. The past and the future. Both quantifiable, measurable. They fit the standards of human definition. The present is not a state of time. It is infinite. It is everlasting. It was the past. It will be the future. But it is always the present. The present never ends. It has no beginning. It has no end. It just always is. What's the point of living for a future which, when you finally get to it, you'll be somewhere else, in some other future? These animals aren't the ones in cages. We are. Cages that leave us stuck up over the past or tied up thinking about the future. When you live one complete moment to its fullest, this is the Tao philosophy, when you experience infinity and eternity as you know it, when you feel like you've fully lived out the entire age of the universe in one moment, that is, you've actually lived in the present, you are ready to greet death with a smile. I was close to a predator, uncomfortably close, when I felt fear, reverence, and eventually, enlightenment. I lived in that moment for infinity. No one ever really needs to move on from something. Time and the universe take care of that for you. All you need to do is live when you are. Sleep not knowing if the sun is going to shine tomorrow, not knowing if everyone you love will wake up tomorrow, because they might not. In the forest, wild dogs have a success rate of 90%. If you see a hungry pack, your death is almost certain. They hunt in groups and surround their prey, eating newborns, giant bisons, and can even take down elephants. So sleep not knowing if this is the last time your heart beats. Because when you wake up, you'll be glad that the sun is still shining that the earth still pulls the exact same way how it used to, that you are capable of walking, loving, caring, you'll be glad you woke up. In the wild, life is dramatic beyond human comprehension. There's stories waiting to be heard, lessons waiting to be taught. The forest teaches man more about the man than man ever could. I go to university to learn engineering, but ever so often, I go into the wild to make sure that I don't become one.